The scent of summer has filled us all around. Have you noticed it? The flavor lies in the hot sun, but is very often mixed with a large clouds of water vapor, and the rains are more earthy, hot, and long. And rainbows too are easier to appear in this kind of weather. What an atmosphere that makes us want to go travel! Don't you think so? Summer vacations spent with familiar and forgettable times in your children's hearts. Not only are the outings far and near, not entirely by sea or the forest, the plateau or the hills that are new and attractive to you, but also because during that time, parents and families spend the whole day with you. Partly, I think, nothing is better than that with you at your age. It's also because your children know that after returning from outings, parents will be busy with our livelihood. They cannot spend all the time in the day with you. It is also something that cannot be changed at different stages of life, where each passes moment will not return. Speaking of which, has my little love ever thought about this? If you still have grandparents and you've spent time with them, do you know why you feel happy to be with them? That is because the hardworking part of the grandparents' life has passed. Grandparents have full time and attention for you when they are with you. Something that, at the age and lifespan of parents, it is difficult for us to fulfill for you. This reminds me of this part of the previous chapter of Toto Chan's story. Like the other six already at the school, this car, which has carried so many people, had its wheels removed. Its traveling life was over. From now on, it could bring the sound of children's laughter only. The students at Tomoe School had so much for learning from those old railroad cars, which were special classes. There had never been such classes up to that time that were so special. Not only because they were railroad cars, but also because the cars were deprecated as they were, like grandparents. We Vietnamese have a saying, "Kính già già để tuổi cho." which means that if we love and respect older adults, like our grandparents, they will share with us their life experiences, learn from what our grandparents went through so that our lives will be better. They had master reused on railroad cars to give the children an unforgettable childhood with the life term of primary age. My lovely little angel, let you love and respect your grandparents and the elders around you. I believe that all will be happy. Today, two chapters begin the summer vibe where Tutu Chan lived. Let us continue. Swimming pool and the report card. That's what a red letter day for Tutu Chan. It was the first time she had ever swum in a pool and without a stitch on. It happened in the morning. The headmaster said to all of them, It's become quite hot all of a sudden, so I think I'll fill the pool. Wow! Everybody cried, jumping up and down. Toto Chan and the first grade children cried yay too, jumping up and down with even greater excitement than the older students. The pool at Tomoe was not rectangular like most pools, as one end was narrower than the other. It was shaped pretty much like a boat. The lay of the land probably had something to do with it. But nonetheless, the pool was a large and splendid one. It was situated between the classroom and the assembly hall. All oh, due during the lessons, Toto Chan and the others kept stealing glances out the window at the pool. It had been littered with falling leaves, just like the playground when empty. But now that it was clean and filling up, it started to look like an actual swimming pool. 
Lang Tam finally arrived, and when the children were all gathered around the pool, the headmaster said, "We do some exercises and then have a swim." Don't you need a swimsuit to go swimming? Thought Toto Chan. When she went to Kamakura with mother and daddy, she took swimsuit, a rubber ring, and all sorts of things. She tried to remember if teacher had asked them to bring swimsuit. Then, just as if he had read her thoughts, the headmaster said, "Don't worry about the swimsuits. Go and look in the assembly hall." When Toto Chan and the other first graders got to the assembly hall, the big girl children were taking off their clothes with shrieks of delight, as if they were going to have a bath. They ran out, stuck naked, one after the other, into the school grounds. It makes Toto Chan and her friends hurriedly follow them. It felt wonderful not to have any clothes on the warm breeze. When they reached the top of the steps outside the assembly hall, they found the others already do warm-up exercises. Toto Chan and her classmates ran down the steps in their bare feet. The swimming instructor was Miyo Chan's elder brother, the headmaster's son, and an expert in gymnastics. He wasn't a teacher, Tomoe, but he was on the swimming team of the university. His name was the same at the schools, Tomoe. Tomoe-san wore swimming trunks. After the exercises, the children screamed as cold water poured over them, and then they jumped into the pool. Toto Chan did not go until she had watched some of the others and satisfied herself they could stand. It wasn't hot like in the bath, but it was lovely and big. As far as you could stretch your arms, there was nothing but water. Thin children, plum children, boys, girls—they were all laughing and shouting and splashing in their birthday suits. What fun! Thought Toto Chan, and what a lovely feeling! She was only sorry Rocky couldn't come to school. She was sure that if he knew he could go in without a swimsuit, he could be in the pool too. You might wonder why the headmaster allowed the children to swim naked. There were no rules about it. If you brought your suit and wanted to wear it, it was perfectly all right. On the other hand, like today. When you suddenly decided to go in without a suit, that was perfectly all right too. And why did he let them swim in the nude? Because he thought it wasn't right for boys and girls to be in a bad way, curious about the differences in their bodies, and he felt it was unnatural for people to take such pains to hide their bodies from the others. The headmaster wanted to teach the children that all bodies are beautiful. Among the pupils at Tomoe were some who had had polio, like Yasuaki Chan, or were very small or otherwise handicapped. And he felt if they bared their bodies and played together, it could rid them of feelings of shame and help to prevent them from developing an inferiority complex. And it turned out while the handicapped children were initially shy. They soon began to enjoy themselves, and finally, they overcame their shyness. Some parents were worried about the idea and provided their offspring with swimsuits, which they insisted should always be worn. Little did they know how seldom the suits were used. Observing children like Toto Chan, who right from the start decided swim naked was best. And those who said they had forgotten to bring their suits and went in anyway, most of them became convinced it was much more fun swimming naked like the others. So all they did was make sure they took wet swimsuits home. Consequently, almost all children at Tomoe became as brown as berries all over, and there were hardly any with white swimsuit marks.
Looking neither right nor left, her back flapping against her back, Toto Chen ran all the way home from the station. Anyone seeing her could have thought something terrible had happened. She had started running as soon as she was out of the school gate. Once home, she opened the front door, called out, I'm back, and looked for Rocky. He was lying on the porch, cooling off with his belly flat against the floor. Tutu Chan didn't say a word. She sat down before Rocky took her back off her back and took out the report card. It was her very first report card. She opened it so Rocky could clearly see her marks. Look, she said proudly. There were A's and B's and other characters. Naturally, Toto Chan didn't know yet whether A was better than B or B was better than A, so it could have been even more challenging for Rocky to know. But Toto Chan wanted to show her very first report card to Rocky before anyone else, and she was sure Rocky would be delighted. When Rocky saw the paper in front of his face, he sniffed it and gazed up at Toto Chan. You're impressed, aren't you? said Toto Chan. But it's full of difficult words, so you probably can't read all of it. Rocky tilted his head as if he was having another good looking at the car. Then he licked Toto Chan's hand. Okay, she said with satisfaction, getting up. Now I'll go and show it to mother. After Toto Chan had gone, Rocky got up and found himself a cooler spot. Then he let himself down again slowly and closed his eyes. It wasn't only Toto Chan who could have said that the way his eyes were closed, it really seemed as if he was thinking about the report card. Today's story time is over. Summer rain in the middle of a high temperature sunny day makes the air from the earth spread out stronger and thicker. My little angel, let you keep yourself from breathing too much of it or you will get sick easier. What can a vapor from the earth appear at the beginning of a summer rain make us sick? Let you, my little love, try to find out. I kiss you long on your forehead. See you again next time.